Today, we're going to talk about the light squares. And today's game was submitted by Sombrero, who's a friend of the dojo, also playing a friend of the dojo, Dan Schmidt. Both of them have had games on this dojo game review before, and I'll link to those videos below. Okay, so um, one thing about this is that we're now, whether we play the bishop's opening with bishop c4 or bishop b5, I feel like we're in the age of the closed um, the, the closed Rui or the closed bishop. Everybody's playing this d3 thing, and it results in a much more maneuvering game with still a lot of venom for white. So black can do a variety of things, and this looks very wrong but actually has an interesting idea with g5. And um, if you, it, <laughs> people of my generation would not, don't really generally approve of such methods um, because back in the day, this was not allowed. You were not allowed to do this. But just like we have Harry the h-pawn now, we also now have Gary the g-pawn. And if you conceive of it as a spatial grab on the king side, then I think it's fundamentally playable. Um, this is going to become our key square, uh, and that's why the light squares in particular are going to be very critical. And maybe you could even construe it as a debate, um, which would be, can black get away with giving away this light square? I think he can, uh, but he has to be careful not to let it slide into white's possession. Um, let me just say a couple dogmatic, pedantic points here that whether he plays h6 or g5 or something else, the f part of the struggle that we need to recognize here is that when white invests time in c3, he is not playing like Fisher did for d4. He is playing to dominate the knight. And so black already needs to be sensitive to that knight being funky. And I think that one of the key things that black players can take away from this is that they need to be prepared sooner rather than later to play knight e7, both to think about knight g6, but also just to talk to the weak light square. Um, and in general, whether you play h6 or g5, you need to have that same mindset. The knight on c6 now needs to be improved. Okay, now, um, h3, and my first instinct was to yell at Sombrero for this move, uh, and I liked his um, other plan here. Knight g3, bishop b6, bishop b5. Now, below me, you can see his notes. Every time I do these game reviews, I always like to show um, what people did in their own notes. And I really do believe in terms of chess improvement that that is the path to improve, is to write out your own notes. Um, I'm not sure about bishop b5, but I definitely believe in this position for white. Uh, queen e2, for example, would also be a good move so that we just keep our eye on all the light squares. Definitely like white in this position. Um, but Sombrero's move, it grew on me, h3. And we're just going to control the light squares here. All right, now, critical moment. Uh, next couple moves very fascinating to me. I spent some time here. Um, I think this is precisely the moment black should be thinking about 97. And this introduces two ideas, like I said. One, just to fight for this square, which maybe we'll play, you know, king over knight moves in f5, and maybe we'll play knight g6, but we're also just going to bring force over to the king side and improve our knight. Our knight is poor on c6. Um, and I definitely don't think he should be doing this kind of stuff. Way too dangerous. Even HG, I mean, you're opening up the rook. It's got to be a great thing. So one of the things I see a lot is this move, D5. And in general, I'm going to say it's the wrong idea. And um, one way to think about it is 
pawns, pawns are pe pawns are people, and they're there to help your pieces. And d5 doesn't actually help any of the black pieces say get out, and that's the purpose of pawn moves in the opening is to get our pieces out. So now white has a choice about how to deal with this. Um, I really want to say that I'm not a great fan of what Sombrero did ed5. We'll see. It's going to be interesting, but I don't like it. And one of the main reasons I don't like it is it releases a lot of the pressure on the f5 square. Now, another thing about all of these positions in general that I waited until now to explain is this bishop kind of like the London bishop, you know, uh, needs to make another move generally. You don't just get to put it out there on bishop c4 and, and, you know, get it to do its thing. So what White can say to himself is, well, I needed to move the bishop anyway, and let's play bishop b3. And then you're really asking, well, why, why is d5 a good thing? I certainly don't think this endgame is any good at all for black, and these, this is a variation that Sombrero gave. Knight is dominated, weak light square, better king. You know, all of that is going on in white's favor. So I like, I don't like d5, but I also don't like ed5. And so black now, I think, can dream about controlling the light squares. And also, of course, when he got white's e pawn, he got a chunk of the center. And, you know, Sombrero invested all of this time into playing the knight to g3. Well, if the knight on g3 doesn't get to go to h5 in any meaningful way, then I'm not sure it was such a great deal. Okay, so what should he have done? What should have black done? Something like, I think, knight d e7. So that way we control f5, we try to say this guy's out, and we're going to try to grab all the space soon with something like king h7 and f5. Uh, still a very dynamic position, but I, I like black there. Maybe also knight b6 would be a thought, but I'm a little nervous about the knight getting stranded on the side of the board. Instead, we see bishop e6. And you see this in a lot of Rui Lopez positions too, and oftentimes it's fine, but here I think bishop e6 is very problematic. Um, and the problem is that you're setting yourself up to exchange your light square bishop. Once that thing is gone, then oh no, <laughs> then oh no, all the light squares really then are a problem. So, um, and by the way, one thing I just want to make a note, Sombrero, like everybody, is on a learning curve with doing the notes. And you can see he's got some succinct and good variations here. Um, I think it would help to try to establish which moves he thinks are poor and which moves he thinks are good. So for example, to me, bishop e6 would deserve a question mark, um, as well as some of the other ones as we discussed. So bishop e6, Rookie one, and now black has some interesting problems. It's interesting because white's not actually threatening much right now, but it's difficult to get out, to, to consolidate the position without trading your beautiful bishop on e6. So I spent some time here. I could not find a simple way to do it. For example, if queen d7, you got to worry about bishop b5, that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe also 94. The computer might find a way. I didn't find a way. In any case, black continued with his plan, which is knight f4. Now, I think to Dan's mind, when he plays knight f4, what he's doing is he's relieving the pressure. But what he's really doing is giving black, white the light squares. And this was the dynamic that he set up earlier on by playing h6, g5. You had one job, Dan, and that was to control f5. And so now, boom, boom. And now the medallion is getting warm. The medallion is getting warm because we're getting the light squares. So now, I like white's position a lot. Um, and the 
obvious move, I think, was knight f5. And um, Sombrero does a thing where he you know, puts a funny move mark on knight h2, um, but doesn't say, hey, what should he have played? And so, by the way, I want to really say, uh, going over your games is a process that, you know, it's both difficult and there's a learning curve. Like, how do you do the notes? What kind of questions do you ask, right? Um, so, I want to just put that out there for a constructive critique for future games that he is going to annotate. So, knight f5 seems great to me for white. Knight h2 is a little funky, and this is like Dan's big chance. He now has a chance to play f5. I'm going to put my own little exclam there. And all of a sudden, with that big fat pawn, you are controlling both of white's knights. And I don't know why a black should be worse anymore, right? Big opportunity for black here to control the center. And right, I don't think you want to be grabbing b7 because then, you know, knight c5, knight d3 will end with an octopus over there on the d3 square. So um, instead, knight c5, and that feels like a chronic disregard for the f5 square, the light squares. And now nice move, boom. Queen h5 I felt was also interesting, but let's look at this, and queen d3. By all means, we, you gotta at least try, Dan, to fight for the f5 square with something like queen d7. So, boom, and now I think it's, it's very difficult. It is, now, it is now officially very difficult. I like bishop e3, maybe there's other moves, but I like bishop e3 because we wanna get our rook to d1, a light square, where it's gonna aim for d7, a light square. And let's talk about these light squares. Let's just light them up. We're going to see them all actually in action here. You know, all of these squares are going to be for white in, in just a half a second. And let's say the obvious, this bishop isn't great. And black never solved his bad knight on c6, which is talking to dark squares. Notice the knight on e6, also talking to dark squares. The bishop on g7, talking to dark squares. All right, knight f4. Thank you very much. And knight f3, finally bringing the dude back in. And it's it's very difficult, but black really does... He, it's kind of a picturesque end in a lot of ways because <laughs> he's given up. He, he's already been so lax of fighting for his own light squares that we're just going to put it on the board. Boom. And now he's playing checkers over there with all the everything on the touching the dark squares rook d7 exclam check to them that's not check yet but that's check and this is going to be mate beautiful and then black finally resigns here okay so there it is a pretty exemplary game about what it means to play on the light squares and what it means not to feel from the defensive side that you have to take care of a certain color complex. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time. Bye-bye.